In today's video, I'm going to show you how I take a focus stacked macro image and edit the whole thing from start to finish on my iPad mini in the middle of the forest. So the shot I found is this really, really simple, but I think quite beautiful scene here. It's this gorgeous fir cone or pine cone that I've just found lying in this lovely vibrant green um, moss. And I just love that color contrast between the vibrancy of that green and the muted brown tones of the cone itself. I've done a little bit of cleanup on this of the scene, just sort of picking up and removing some of these uh, these twigs and things, just because it was quite cluttered and um, uh, I didn't really want those in the shot. I haven't pulled anything out. I haven't removed anything that's naturally growing. So the scene very much is as it is. I've just got rid of some extraneous bits. I'm going for a nice top down view for this, but I'm still going to have to do some focus stacking. I'm going to use two images for this, both taken at f16. Um, that needs to be at a third of a second from my shutter speed. So I'm going to do one focusing on the mosses, the very tips of the mosses, just like that. Back out, ISO 100, take my shot. Then I'm going to do another one, this time focusing on the top of the cone because as you can see that isn't quite in focus so we need to bring that up just like that and then take our shot so now we should have both of those images with the two different focus points and i can take those onto the ipad now thankfully there is a bench just a couple of feet away from where i've taken that photo i will be doing this on the ipad mini i frequently use the ipad mini for photo editing because it's great for traveling. It's so small, you can just chuck it in a bag, but still got a big enough screen to work on. Obviously, start by plugging in our SD card reader and we go to add files from camera device. So I'm just gonna add those images to all images. That's now done, so I can take the dongle out. Now if I go up to all photos, go right to the very top, that will be where our images are. Flip it over into landscape, for these shots that will make things much easier. Uh, first of all, I just need to rotate it because that is not the way, I know that's rotating my crop. What I need to do is rotate the actual image like this. And what I'm gonna start is just do some basic um, exposure and color adjustments in Lightroom. I don't wanna do loads to this because I like how the image already looks. It's got very much like quite a natural um, tone overall. I do just want to slightly bring down those highlights, maybe pull down the shadows just to give it a little bit more contrast. Um, at this point, if I'm working on location, I, I rely quite a lot on presets just because it's a great jumping off point to give a little bit of color toning, a bit of inspiration, and then I can apply some more edits over the top, but it kind of gets me going. Um, I do quite like um, this particular one, which I use for forest scenes um, sometimes. But I wanna um, work on it a little bit more in the color tab and in the color mix. Now here I get full control over the hue, saturation, and luminance of all different colors. I start with the greens and I wanna actually push that hue up. And this is gonna start um, giving it a, a very sort of emeraldy green color, a little bit overpowering. So I'm gonna back the saturation off a little bit, but also increase the luminance. Actually, just gonna bring that hue down. I've gone a little bit too far, I think. It's gonna give it this really nice sort of deep emeraldy green tone, which I really like. But I'm gonna balance that out a little bit with the, with the yellow tones by bringing those down more into the oranges. And again, upping that luminance, upping that saturation. We see how before and after. So I really like how this is looking so far. Just going to back that green hue off a little bit and maybe just bring that luminance down. It's always a process of fine tuning these things. But overall, I'm already really pleased with how this looks. Bring the luminance of the orange down a little bit and actually I'm going to increase that saturation, slightly drop that hue as well. And I think this is looking really, really nice. I'm just going to slightly bring that crop down that is everything I would want to do, I think, on the color um, and exposure for this image. But of course we have two images, so I need to go to these three dots in the top right, go to copy settings, make sure that everything is ticked, crop, healing, light, all our color settings, copy those, swipe over, and go to paste settings. 
Uh, so this has pasted everything except for the um, rotation. That's fine. So we look, both images are now identical. So now what I need to do is take these both into Photoshop on the iPad and actually layer them up so I can mask in the focus points. Unfortunately, you can't select both images and edit in as layers Photoshop like you can on a desktop. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to go to um, export to camera roll, check the settings. I'm going to, I'm going to keep it as a JPEG because I'm, that's fine. Image quality, hundred percent export that one. And then I'm going to do the same here in export to camera roll. Did that first one do? Maybe it didn't. Export to camera roll. Okay, now we've got both. Cut to a different part of the forest because my mic broke and I had to jiggle things around and here I am. Anyway, let's open our files in Photoshop. So we're gonna load up Photoshop, import and open photos. And then we're going to first of all open this one, which I believe should be the focus layer on the mosses, which will be our bottom layer. Yep, that's right. And as we can see, yeah, the cone is very much blurry on the top. Now we're going to go to layers, add a new layer and photos, and we're going to add then our first image. And as we can see, suddenly the cone has popped into sharp focus. Now we've got both of those and that looks great. I'm just going to flatten this layer like that. Now what I am going to do just to check is I'm going to go on these sliders and go to our blend mode and just change that top layer to difference. This is going to show me whether or not the two images line up. Um, if I just grab this uh, move tool, as I move things around, look, you can see what happens to the image. It goes all weird, but as things line up, those lines basically disappear. So it's already pretty much there. We've got quite a messy background, so actually if it doesn't exactly line up pixel by pixel, it's fine. But this is one of the problems of working on the iPad. Um, Photoshop here doesn't have the automated tools to auto align layers and auto blend layers. So that is why we're having to manually line everything up and then manually paint in those different focus points. It takes a lot more time, but it can be done. I need to change that blend mode back to normal. There we go. So now everything lines up really, really nicely. I can hide this. So the first thing I want to do is apply a mask and do that just by clicking this button on the right with a little cutout circle. And it's applied a white mask and a white mask means that everything is revealed. A black mask means that uh, everything is hidden. So in this case, I actually want this top layer, which is the focusing on the cone to be hidden. So I'm just going to press this button with a little looks like a lightning bolt on it. I'm going to press invert. It's going to invert our mask to black. And as we can see, that cone now um, looks blurry because it's only showing that bottom layer. So now I go to our brush tool and I select a white color and I want a fairly decent brush size, something like that. And what about my flow? Medium flow. 30%, something like that. And I'm gonna zoom in, fill the frame with that cone. And with my Apple Pencil, we're just gonna paint in that cone on the top, not too far to the edges because our edges is where it curves and it starts to meet the ground. That's already in focus. So it's really just this top bit that we need to work on. Gently brushing this in trying not to go too far. As you can see, as I paint over, things haven't lined up perfectly, but they're close enough. And because of the way that we're doing this masking, we actually don't need it to be perfect. There are parts of this that will not be completely pin sharp because I haven't done multiple images. You possibly could, if you spent enough time using these same techniques, do an image focus stack that's three, four, five plus images deep, but it would take a long time to paint all that in manually. This way I think is great for just doing like a quick focus stack with two main focus points. And actually I'm pretty happy with how that looks. So we've now got the pine cone nice and pin sharp as is the moss around it. So it's looking really, really good. That's all I want to do here. We've done our focus stack. I'm just gonna press 
uh, export. We're going to export a JPEG, maximum quality. And we're going to send that over to Lightroom. And here then is our image. And you can see the difference. In this image, our pine cone on the top is sharp, but the uh, mosses aren't. And in this one, our mosses are nice and sharp, but the pine cone isn't. And now suddenly, focus stacked. Beautiful. Everything looks nice and sharp. So I could just do a couple more adjustments if I want. Maybe bring down those highlights a little bit and those shadows up the whites. Go back into our color maybe. Go to our color mix and um, maybe up those greens a little more. And the luminance. Bring those yellows down, make them a little warmer. Something like this. Overall, it's not perfect, but I'm really, really happy with how this looks. And the fact is, is that I've taken my photos just over there and I've come over here and I've edited and done a focus stack on my iPad mini in the middle of the forest. How cool is that? Like, no, it's not an elegant way of doing it. And, you know, I can't do a 15, 20 image focus stack, but I can get a really, really passable result just using my tiny portable little iPad. It's cool. I hope this has been a useful and enjoyable video. If you have enjoyed it, do please hit that like button and do consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already. And I will see you next time.